Hey, hey, everybody. Okay, let's talk circles. I know that circles can be intimidating to cut. I get more intimidated sometimes on larger circles than smaller circles. So let's talk about um, some of the ways that you can accomplish circles. I chose the circle shape because that is a classic rosette window and uh, I wasn't messing around this year. So uh, I know I went circles. I know they can be a little challenging. I wanted to give you a couple of ideas on how you might be able to uh, accomplish a circle if cutting them is not your forte. First, I would say try to cut them because listen, that, that builds character, right? <laughs> you're going to become stronger and have uh, better confidence if you just cut up your circles. Uh, so in this case, I just have a three millimeter sheet of Tecta. I've drawn an outline. You can use your good old fashioned glass cutter to kind of run some lines around those. Uh, take that extra off. You might have to clean up your edges a little bit, maybe with a grinder or maybe not. If you did a really nice job and kind of cleaned it up on your own, it's going to, uh, you know, any other imperfections will kind of settle out in the kiln. So that is uh, one way in which to get yourself a circle. Another way are traditional circle cutters. I have the silver schnitt. I love this for larger circles. Uh, you could use it for something this small. I'm just not sure that I would. You don't need this. This will do just fine, but here's an option for you to think about if you've got one. Uh, I also have this lens cutter, uh, which cuts smaller sized circles, but uh, you know, put your glass on there. I happen to like this uh, tip about using a little bit of a foamy plastic shelf liner because it keeps the glass in place better. Get yourself lined up there, run your circle, and then you have it ready to go. Now, there's a score line then, and you can either kind of run some, some uh, relief points and get your circle out. I cut up a bajillion circles myself for testing. I say bajillion. Honestly, it was probably about 40 circles. 40 circles is a lot. I used this thing, and what I was doing, uh, this would probably give other glass artists a heart attack, but to run my score and just to kind of keep my sanity, I would flip it over. Now again, I had used this lens cutter, and so the glass was in there, and I was taking the back end, this kind of brass end, and I was just whacking the holy hell out of it <laughs> and kind of breaking my glass out and you know what it worked out of 40 I had one that broke one that broke the rest of them came out and they were a little rough around the edge and I had to work on that and clean them up but but it worked and so um, it was easy for me and and uh, you know I suggest that is maybe something for you to consider now if you're just opposed to cutting circles period then uh, here are a couple of other ideas for you to consider I don't have a handy guide, but there is the option where you can kind of take squares of glass and stack them and then do a full fuse and it'll melt into a circle. I've seen some resources like that online. If I can find one, I'll drop it in the, a link in it. My concern about doing that is that's a lot of glass and the weight gets heavy. And if you're gonna use this as an ornament, you don't want it to be heavy. So that's not the way I would do it, but that is one option for you to consider. Let's talk about some other options. Let me move some stuff out of the way. One other option is uh, in some other videos I've done, I've bought good old fashioned ceramic uh, uh, dinnerware. And this one I sprayed with zip and then I put scrap glass in it and used it as a scrap mold. And I got a very nice, beautiful circle. Now this is the wrong size. I mean, I guess it would work. It just, my, my design wouldn't go edge to edge. But the concept is what I wanted to try to communicate to you. Uh, you could use a scrap melt by using some vessel, measure the bottom diameter, see how close it is to three and a half inches. It's an option for you. Now, in this case, this piece of glass ends up being thick because uh, I put a lot of glass in and therefore it's heavy. Uh, yeah, 9.7, 9.8 millimeters thick. That's quite a bit thicker. It's heavy. It would be a very heavy ornament if that's what you were going to use this for. If you're not going to use it as an ornament, that might not be a concern, but that's an option. Spray out some vessel that you can find to use as a scrap mold, and you might uh, get good circles out of that. You could also take this is a quarter inch piece of fiber paper, uh, not quarter, sorry, uh, eighth inch, right? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, you could take three millimeter. You could take uh, fiber paper, cut yourself a circle and basically make a little scrap melt mold. Um, once you have that circle cut, let's imagine, let's imagine that that's a piece of Sharpie. Ignore the glass, but I've got a circle there. You know, cut that out. Use an X-Acto knife to cut that out. 
uh, and then you can, um, you know, use that, fill it with just a little bit of glass, fill it with frit, maybe fill it with frit and cap it with your clear glass. The only thing is you might get some rough edges, so that's something to consider. Uh, my good friend Tony kind of blew my mind one day by showing me a trick. Uh, if you can find uh, the right size, and I'm sure they make it like a biscuit cutter or a cookie cutter where it's gonna have a really sharp edge. Let me use this as an example, although this one doesn't have a sharp edge. But if you could find a three and a half inch cookie cutter, she put it on fiber paper and it had a sharp edge at the bottom. And then she took a hammer and she just whacked it. Boom, 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 boom. And, and it pressed down in and basically cut through this and she lifted it up and had a perfect circle. Blew my mind. So that's an option for you. Speaking of these rings, uh, I found these on Amazon. They are English muffin rings, but they happen to measure exactly three and a half inches. So uh, you can see how that works. So this ring uh, is technically, was it stainless steel? I can't remember. It may not be stainless steel. So I'm not sure that I would fire this in the kiln, but the reason I bought them is because I can use it as a uh, mold on the kiln shelf to fill with frit. I will show that to you later in um, a different video, but um, this was just for me, the shape that I could use to uh, fill with flit, frit. I put that on the kiln shelf, then I lifted that up and my frit was in a, in a perfect circle. So that's an idea for you. Same concept here. Also, I found these on Amazon. This is a um, stainless steel hose clamp. This was a 10 pack, it was relatively cheap. Now with this uh, hose clamp, same thing, I could use it as a mold, put it on the shelf, fill it with some frit, lift it up and I've got a perfect circle of dry frit on my kiln shelf that I can fire. But because these are stainless steel, you could line these with fiber paper, hang on. Okay, I'm back. Let's pretend that this was long enough you could line this with fiber paper and then basically um, where the fiber paper would meet up, where there's a joint, I would put a little piece of thin fire or papyrus behind it just because that joint could open up. But once this is fully lined with fiber paper, you could actually put glass in here and fire this whole thing as a mold for a scrap melt. So pour some frit in, put some clear tecta or something or other colors and make basically a mini scrap melt mold. I have not fired these. Stainless steel should work well, but uh, that would be something for you to consider as well. So I can't say I've proven that concept, but you could do that. Uh, because these are adjustable, open, close, make them bigger, smaller, you could measure it such that you know that your fiber paper is three millimeter thickness. Get this thing, you know, this is 89 millimeters, 89 plus six makes uh, 95. So you could adjust this ring so that basically you end up with 95 uh, millimeter diameter and you should end up with something at the end of your firing that is uh, closely resembles this. Hopefully you follow along with that. Another idea, I got a, I got a lot of them. Okay, in a, yeah, some of you may have other material in your studio that can be fired in a kiln and used as a mold. So I'm thinking of like vermiculite board, for instance. Is that what it's called? Uh, or I have, um, I've played around with this ceramic guard. This is actually an Armstrong brand ceiling tile. Uh, I made a different video on this. And so I can send, I can post a link to that other video. This might be harder for you to come by. I'm just sharing it as an idea. If you happen to have this or maybe some vermiculite board laying in your theater, in your theater, in your uh, studio, something for you to consider. I, this is too big. These are four inches or even bigger, but uh, the example is the same. I bought a uh, hole saw set and was able to cut perfect circles into this board and then can fire just like I was mentioning with the stainless steel ring, you can use it as a scrap melt mold. So you can, again, line it like this with your fiber paper and then put some scrap glass in and fire it and, uh, and use that as a scrap board. I did larger pieces, so these are larger holes. Uh, this was a scrap melt piece that I did that was in there uh, in, in these circles. Uh, it's super thick. Obviously, uh, this was never intended to be an ornament. I was doing this more as a, as a puck for perhaps a, a drop vessel in the future. But 
concept applies if you want to try to do something like that. And then finally, the other idea, it's going to cost you a little bit more, but just have some water jet cut circles. I found a local supplier who is an industrial water jet cutter. He does all sorts of things, steel and granite and all sorts of materials. I called him up and said, would you consider doing glass? And so I paid him to cut water jets to a very precise measurement, in this case, 89 millimeters for me. Um, that costs you more money than doing it yourself. Many of you are buying a four pack of these, a 16 pack. My intention between testing and between the art shows that I wanna do, I hope to make 300 of these ornaments. So I went with the easy route and found a guy I bought the sheet glass, I took it over to him, and he cut my water jets for me. And so that made it a little bit easier for me to mass produce these. Uh, don't ask for my supplier, I'm not gonna give you his name. Because <laughs> honestly, I don't know that he loved doing it and it's not gonna be his bread and butter. He did it for me kind of as a favor, but maybe you can find a manufacturer. Uh, the Glass Underground does water jet cutting. Um, I know Art Glass, or uh, excuse me, Contempo Art uh, in Arlington, Texas. Uh, Kathy, she does uh, custom water jets. You can find others who do that. And so you could uh, consider something like that. In another video, I'm gonna show you how I created my blanks. But these are ideas for you for circles. Let me know what other ideas you have. I'm sure there are some things I'm not thinking of. Uh, you could also not use a circle. So we'll talk about that in a future video too. Thanks everybody. I have been shipping decals like crazy. I am less than three days in and I've shipped, uh, I don't know, about 75 orders. So thank you for your support. This is gonna be exciting. I cannot wait to see what everybody starts creating. Make sure that you're following the uh, playlist. And if you haven't already, uh, as a customer, you'll get a QR code to join the Facebook group. So when you pull that out of your package, uh, make sure you scan that Facebook. If you've placed an order and you wanna go ahead and join the Facebook group early, drop me a note, send me an email, fusingsupplies at gmail.com. Let me know that you'd like to join the Facebook group before you get your package and we can make that happen. Thank you everybody for your support. Uh, look for more videos coming soon. Bye-bye.